Good evening, everyone. It is Tia, and I am back with another video. Today, this Friday, 7.30 p.m., starts our series of Passion Pour. Passion Pour is designed to posture our hearts for our event in September, Dance With Passion. Listen, this is gonna be a good word tonight. I'm pumped up, but before we get into it, let me just let you all know. Come close, <laughs> okay? We only have 10 tickets remaining for our VIP session. With VIP, it includes the empowerment session as well as the opportunity to train with me. We're gonna be doing dance moves and working on some techniques. So listen, if you know that you're supposed to be in the room specifically for that VIP session to train, go ahead on and get your tickets now, okay? We sold out last year with 10 tickets remaining well before the month of August. Please do not wait till until mid or end of August to decide to get your ticket. Matter of fact, if you could purchase them, I would do so as soon as possible because once those 10 tickets are gone, then the opportunity for VIP will be closed. Um, the good news is that we have opened our general session for those who cannot make the VIP session. So you will still have the opportunity to receive that empowerment session where I will come in and share wisdom and teach and um, give impartation for those who are seeking it and who are wanting to learn more, okay? Passion pour. Let me go down and let y'all know. I was in church. Okay, back up, back up. Let me back it up. Rewind, okay? So I, right before passion pour um one specific morning god had woke me up um and it was it was it was the 29th of june i had to remember god woke me up y'all at around two something in the morning right and when he woke me up he started dealing with me you all and I'm going to be honest, I wanted to roll over and go right back to sleep because your girl listened, <laughs> okay? It was early. But I knew that I would, a part of me would regret that, you know, because I understand that when God goes out of his way to get your attention, that means that he has something that he wants to say. So I said, I would much rather just get up and allow God to speak to me and minister to me. So just before I just I was thinking about, you know, just before I made the decision to close my eyes, I had a change of mind. And so I just sat up and immediately a specific song came to my heart, Withholding Nothing by Pastor William McDowell. And so, you know, God was dealing with me on this particular song, Withholding Nothing. I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. And it was just that. It was repeating that particular part of the song. I know the whole song, but that's the only thing that the Holy Spirit was impressing upon my heart. And next thing you know, girl was just <laughs> worshiping God and just pouring out my heart toward God. And God began to um, download Passion Pour into me. It first started with me because God was, you know, ministering to me concerning certain areas. And then he released Passion Pour to me. Okay. And then I began to pray over this specific word. Um, and God gave me the scripture for it. And fast forward to this past Sunday. Let me tell y'all what happened, how God confirmed this. Listen, I'm get, listen, I get excited. Okay, so I'm in church, right? And when my apostle gets on to preach, 
he says this thing and I wrote it down. Listen, because I, I was like, I'm not going to miss this moment. Okay. God is speaking and I need to get it right verbatim. Okay. <laughs> he says, when it comes to our worship, God wants us to give it all that we have. He said, give it all you got. God wants unrestricted worship. And I was like, Jesus, here we go. Here we go, Father. Because listen, give it all you have, soul, mind, and body. Meaning that we're surrendering our entire being over to God in worship. And at that moment, I was like, God... I have to be obedient and release this word because this exactly what he said was in alignment with the scripture. Let me tell y'all something. My apostle didn't even talk about that particular area. Um, his mess, his sermon was all about tithing and, and it is a form of worship, but you know, um, that just stood out to me. It just stood out to me because I'm like, he went from that to tithing. I'm like, God is just, you know, like he's speaking. And so I know that there is a word from God concerning us, concerning the academy and everyone that will be attending Dance With Passion. Okay. So let me go ahead on and open up with a word of prayer and I'm going to get straight into this word. I'm not going to be before you all long. Actually, I have church tonight. So by the time you're watching this, I will be at church. Um, but yes, let's get into prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I give you all the praise, honor and glory for who you are. I thank you, Father God, that you've given us an opportunity to come before you, to pray, to hear from you, to get instruction, Father God, and to hear your heart. I pray on tonight that every heart is postured to receive what it is that you want to download into us, what it is that you want to do as you set the tone for what is to come for Dance With Passion, Father God. Minister to every heart. Let this be confirmation for someone, Father God. Let this touch someone's heart, Lord God. As I begin to speak, Father, let it be all of you and none of me. I decrease so that you will increase and get all the glory for what it is that you're getting ready to release. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Okay, let's get into this word. We're going to go to John chapter 12. And I'm looking to the side because I actually have my laptop open. And this is what I'm going to be reading from. I'm actually going to pause this uh, this instrumental because it's not really. <laughs> um, I feel like it's a little distraction. Let's see. All right, so we're going to go to John chapter 12. And we're going to read verses 3 through 8. Yep, John chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. And I'm going to give you all just a few minutes to uh, find that. I do ask that you would actually take the time to um, open the scripture so that we can go through it together. But if you're not able to look at it right away and read it right away, I do pray that you or ask that you will read it in your leisure because um, I do believe that God will open up your heart and your eyes and um, you'll be able to hear and see what God um, wants to do in you individually. Okay, so I believe it's a good idea to do that. All right, so we're going to read that and we're going to jump right in. All right, so It says, Mary took a very expensive bottle of perfume and poured it on Jesus' feet. She wiped them with her hair 
and the sweet smell of the perfume filled the house. A disciple named Judas, his chariot was there. He was the one who was going to betray Jesus and he asked, why wasn't this perfume sold for 300 silver coins and the money given to the poor? Judas did not really care about the poor. He asked this because he carried the money bag and sometimes will steal from it. Jesus replied, leave her alone. She has kept this perfume for the day of my burial. You will not always have the poor with you, but you won't, you will always have the poor with you, excuse me, but you won't always have me. Let's see. I'm going to stop right there. This lady took a very expensive bottle of perfume and poured it on Jesus's feet. She wiped them with her hair and the sweet smell of the perfume filled the house. I want you to be mindful of the posture that she had. Because in order to wipe someone's feet, there is a level of humility, first of all. There's a level of humility um, spiritually, but even in the natural, she got low. And the attention was all on Jesus. She came there to pour out her affection upon him. She had a revelation of who he was. She understood who Jesus was was and i believe that when it comes to giving our all in worship when it comes to pouring with passion dancing with passion we have to first have a revelation of who jesus is and then we also have to come to him in the in humility in humility to be able to get to that place where we're able to surrender and we're able to pour our all on Jesus's feet, pour our all onto him. And some of the thing, one thing that the, the opposite of humility, I want to say is pride. And sometimes in our pride, we may not be able to recognize that it's pride, but a part of pride is, um, coming to Jesus as if you have it all together. And we're going to deal with that too. And in in, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but coming to Jesus as if we have ourselves together. And when we do that, we are saying subconsciously that we don't need a savior. But remember, Jesus seeks for only specific types of worshipers. There are specific types of worshipers that Jesus is calling for in this hour. He says in his word that those that worship me must worship me in spirit and in truth. And a part of worship is understanding and to be able to worship God truly for who he is, is first recognizing that we need Jesus as a savior. It's humbling ourselves and realizing that we're not good enough in our own strength. But I can pour out to Jesus understanding that he receives me for who I am, which is the posture of my poor anyway, because I understand that I know that I'm not perfect. I know that I'm a human being. I know that I, you know, I'm a sinner. I know this and I know that there are people that tune in and, and, and I know that you don't, you don't, you're not a dancer. Um, and I, I noticed that I do look at my analytics too, um, but I don't believe it's by accident that you're tuning in. I don't know your status with God, but I'm just going to go with the flow. There are some people that may come across this channel and you're, you're not even saved. You know, but, but a part of receiving from God is understanding that we need a savior. I don't want to get ahead of myself. We need a savior. And again, it does require humility. 
I can share this because I've been in that position. As God was transitioning me from a praise dancer to more of a liturgical dancer back in 2011, he dealt with me on this. I had just rededicated my life back to God, came home from South Carolina after completing my freshman year of college at the age of, I think I was 19 whenever I, no, I was, I was 19. Yep. I was 19 when I returned home and I remember going back to church and I would act as if I had every, had it all together. I was coming with a smile, but on the inside, I needed God to come in and, and change me and touch me and heal me, make me whole. And I remember one particular day I stepped foot in the vestibule and the anointing of God was so strong, I could no longer hold it together. All I could do was weep. It's interesting because there's another passage of scripture that talked about a woman anointed Jesus and she came in weeping wiping his feet and this is the same scripture it goes in a little bit more detail she was she was um her tears begin to hit uh hit the feet of jesus and she began to wipe them with her hair i believe that's what the scripture says but i remember getting to that place where i can no longer pretend that i had it all together i had to release what i had been holding on to to god i began to I, I couldn't I couldn't hold myself together you all tears began to flow and that was um that was the start of me releasing what I had been holding on to and I remember that within that same time frame I went to a the se a second service that we had and while praise and worship was going on I didn't have to dance that day but while praise and worship was going on I heard the Holy Spirit say to me, go to the altar. And it's interesting because it was the time of praise and worship. And it's not normally um, an altar call at that time. No one called for an altar call. There's a specific time, you know, <laughs> that I was used to um, going to the altar. You know, when we when they ask if anybody needs prayer, you know what I'm saying. And so... Um, God was dealing with me. I don't, I'm going to discuss a little more in detail as the weeks go by. But I heard, I said, God, if this is you, because while the first time I heard him speak to me in, during the service, I was like, okay, like, <laughs> no, nah, this ain't God, you know. And you know how we do. And it was me. It, I was That was the first time I heard the voice of the Holy Spirit uh, internally. Um, there are many different ways that he speaks. But that's the first time I experienced him speaking to me at that way. And I'm like, okay, I know this is not me. Because I don't just randomly think about going to the altar during praise and worship service. Okay, so I, I was having this little internal thing <laughs> and finally i said if if i hear the voice of the holy spirit again i'm gonna know that it's him and i'm going to go to the altar i kid you not the song kept going on and i heard the holy spirit say again to me and in the impression of the holy spirit's voice was louder much louder than the first time it was still like a, a still small voice but it was like a sense of um, urgency, you know? And so I slid past my friend and I began to walk to the altar. It was a slow walk. And I just kneeled. And as I knelt before God at that altar, I began to weep. And I don't know how long I was down there, but I want to say that praise and worship was over. And by that time, my pastor was up to preach. And when I stood up that I had, I didn't even understand it, but I had been carrying a weight that lifted. When I stood up, the weight was gone. I felt a sense of peace. I felt the presence of God. It was like a calm stillness. And I went back to my seat. And that's what prompted me to go deeper in my level of worship. 
God wants us to release what we have been holding on to because it's hindering our, 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 our posture of giving him our all. Remember that song, I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing, withholding nothing. I surrender all to you, everything I give to you, withholding nothing. And I was reading a particular scripture about a, another story in the Bible where a woman anointed Jesus. And um, they said that the perfume within the alabaster box was worth uh, a year, entire year of living. And I had a thought within myself, what if that's all she had to give? The Bible didn't say that. <laughs> But I had a question within myself. One thing that I do know is that God received, however amount it was to her, God received it because Jesus understood. Jesus understood that she was doing this as unto the Lord. She was giving herself over to him. She was pouring out her all to him in that particular moment. And it's when we get in that place where we can pour our all out to Jesus that we begin to minister from a place of passion. God wants us to minister with a, with a posture of passion, of love, of devotion, of understanding of who he is. And, and that comes with humbling ourselves being honest with God about where we are, being honest with the fact that we need him, not just in our liturgical dance ministries, but in our everyday life, because this is more about what we do. This is more than about what we do for God, but it's about who we are in God. It's about our relationship and our connection with God. So as we posture ourselves, I want us to go before the Lord and ask, what have I been holding on to that I need to release to you so that I can properly be postured to worship you in spirit and in truth of who you are in all humility, giving it all that I have. Give it all that you have. This is what we're dealing with leading up to dance with passion. I keep saying this, everybody that I've talked to about dance within the last few months or so, I've always, I've always been led to talk about posture. And so I'm gonna, that's all I have on tonight. I'm gonna close out with a prayer. I mean, we'll be back next week to discuss more. We'll be back with Passion Pour. Heavenly Father, we give you all the glory, honor, and praise for this word that you have downloaded, it, uh, downloaded and released tonight. I pray over every heart, Lord God, that tunes into this message that it, that it will be sown on good ground, that the seed will be planted on good soil. I pray that you're breaking, I, I pray that as they begin to listen, that you're breaking up things in the heart that will keep us from receiving your word, that will keep us from holding on to your word. I thank you that you're uprooting things that need to be uprooted. I thank you, Father God, that you are completely allowing us to, rid ourselves of things that hinder us from giving you our all. We want you to be able to flow freely through us. So I pray in the name of Jesus that we will receive what it is that you're speaking to us and that we will seek you and posture ourselves so that we can give us, give you the worship that you're calling for. 
deep, passionate worship from a place of sincerity, from a place of wisdom and humility. Give you all the praise and all the glory for everything that you're doing. In the name of Jesus, I do pray. Amen. All right. God bless you all on tonight. Listen, I don't have, I'm not going to say too much because God is doing what he's doing. And I am excited about what he's going to say and what he's going to release in this hour through uh, your local dance ministries, um, through your personal life, through our personal life, because this is a, you know, um, I'm not exempt from this, you know, it's for all of us. And, um, if you haven't yet, listen, if you know you're supposed to be in the room for VIP, we have 10 tickets left as of today. Don't hesitate to get your ticket, and I hope to see you in the room. All right? Good night, everybody. See you next time.